All right, we are in Buffalo County at Homegrown Outfitters today with the crew from Love the Grind. And we're gonna visit a six pack of properties today to talk about how they utilize domain food plot seed for year round food, strategy, manipulating deer movement, and creating the perfect habitat to harvest mature whitetails. The neat thing about today and the six properties we're gonna visit is you're gonna get a first hand look at whether you hunt five acres, 100 acres, or 1,000 acres, you own it, you lease it, whatever it might be, the different ways that you can use food plot architecture to create hunting advantages. And it's gonna kind of open your eyes to the opportunities you have and give you ways to turn your property into a domain. So I'm standing at the hub of plot number one, the silo plot. This is a 10 acre destination food source and it has some world-class plot architecture. It's incredible. So the way they've set up the plot architecture here at the silo is that with one destination food plot, you can hunt three different plot locations. Really strategic setup and really increases your opportunity for success. With this 10 acre food plot design, we've got roughly four acres of brassicas and six acres of corn. And the way the brassicas work through this plot, no matter which of the three stands you're in, if a deer is feeding in that big sexier sugar mama, they're likely gonna pass by one of those stands within bow range. But then everything kind of meets here at the hub. Got a licking branch strategically placed behind us, a redneck 20 yards from that, and a perfect big sexy and sugar mama brassica plot working its way through the corn. The way we've designed these brassica mixes with Big Sexy and Sugar Mama is that we've mixed cold and warm season food sources together in one. So no matter when you're hunting it, they'll be in here two to three weeks after you plant, all the way through fall and winter, making this that destination food regardless of the time of year. Plot number two, little 80 acre property, super cool. Pretty much all thermal cover, the whole thing is pine trees. Prime example of a little timber management and a third of an acre food plot. Here we planted Comeback Kid and Hot Chick. Perennial is gonna come back year after year. It is the only food on the property. So we selected that mix to handle the graze pressure, handle some of the shade, grows quick, stays for a long time. And as you can see, Bunch of shade on it right now and it is lush. Planted it late August actually, which it's doing really, really well given the environment and the pine trees being acidic. But center property, perennial food plot, third of an acre, only food on the property. Really neat piece, easy to access. It's a pretty neat walk in. You're coming through a really a dark pine woods and come up over the hill and here's this green oasis of hot chick and comeback kid and you can tell there's a ton of deer tracks in here. They've been hammering this thing. So it should be an interesting plot to hunt over here the next couple of months in Wisconsin. So here in plot number three, the hourglass plot, it's a pretty special farm. It's hundred acres and it's got a valley that runs the entire length of the whole farm. So the challenge we faced here was how can we manipulate deer movement to get them in front of hunters in two different locations. So they handcrafted this hourglass shaped plot that no matter what direction the deer enters the valley from, they find these high protein forages, they feed through this direction or over the hill, and they're always within 50 yards of a blind. We've specifically chosen Big Sexy for this plot location to make sure that there's always forage from early season to late season, whether it's September 15th or December 15th. Big Sexy's got varieties of rape, kale, radish, and turnip. Plants that grow at different maturity levels provide above ground, high protein forage, and below ground energy from the taproot. So Big Sexy is the perfect answer to make sure we've got plenty of tonnage, plenty of forage, and get those deer out in front of our hunters. This is the second part of plot three, and this entire design was created to really kind of manipulate deer movement in this valley and force them within bow range of the blind behind me. So you've got this valley that runs uh, east and west, the ridge where our other plot was at. You've either got to enter from this side of the plot or down the Yellowstone Y through the corn into the big sexy brassica mix. So coming to this farm to hunt, what they've done through food plot architecture is taken a hundred acre farm with a giant valley that runs the entire length of it 
and condensed kind of those hunting locations down to two. You've got plot three, part A, plot three, part B that we're setting in now. So you've taken away all the choices and kind of forced deer into those two locations. Through this food plot design and architecture, we've increased our harvest opportunity. So now we've taken you to plot number four, which is one of my favorites on the homegrown properties. And here, the Love the Grind crew kind of grinded this one out from nothing. It was overgrown CRP, frost seeded this spring, a few mowings to kind of eliminate the rest of that grass. But this little eighth acre comeback kid hot chick plot was kind of carved out of here to be a transition. They get more pictures of deer in daylight on this plot than they do on their destination plots up top. So it doesn't have to be a giant plot to be super effective. You can see that clover is just shining in the sun and it's a fantastic way to kind of give yourself an edge on some of those deer that might feed nocturnally in your destination food plot, but they'll use these transition plots prior to nightfall. This on the surface looks like your typical one acre secluded, big sexy food plot. But this plot's played a strategic role in Love Lagrine's success over the last couple of years. There's a lot more here than meets the eye. Where we are is the perfect habitat break. So again, we're talking about topography a lot and this strategically placed one acre plot is in the perfect location. This one's all about location and how they best optimized their farm and how deer use the hardwoods and the thermals and how they move and position this right in the middle of it. So we've got hardwoods down below, thermal cover up top, and then we've got our one acre big sexy plot. The other thing about the location of this is the access. Two access points to allow you to easily get in and out without spooking any deer. So location and access are the two big call ups for this big sexy plot. Plot number six at Homegrown Outfitters, and this is called Lambo because it's a huge agricultural farm that is running today, and it's surrounded by trees, so it's got the really cool stadium feel. But this is a prime example of what I deal with the property I hunt, where it is a egg farm, whether it's beans or corn or rotation, but it gets harvested every year. And this is a perfect example of what you can do on your property that may be a running agricultural farm to utilize a corner, say at a quarter acre or a half acre, to provide food on a year round basis. On egg, oftentimes you're hunting beans one day and then they get harvested. You're hunting cut corn one day and it gets plowed under. This gives you a scenario where you can manipulate forage, deer movement, consumption, and have food year round to improve your hunting success. So whether you rent a property or lease a property, if it's being farmed, this is a perfect example of working with the landowner to set aside a back corner, plant a half acre of, of domain brassicas, and provide food on a year-round basis. It's not gonna get tilled under or harvested. It's gonna draw deer in and give you an opportunity to provide a hunting advantage, even on a property that you don't own. No matter what time of the year the farm is in, whether it's planting season or harvest season, this will always give you a place where you have forage available to hunt over. We've showed you six different properties and six different ways to build a domain. And hopefully you were able to kind of pull some strategies and ideas, food plot blends, techniques, to help turn your property into a domain.